Today on Two Crazy Ketos, I'm going to show you how a South Floridian shovels snow. So the first thing you need to do to shovel snow is you have to make sure you're wearing a t-shirt. You don't need any long clothes. It's not that cold out there. If I had shorts, I would actually be wearing shorts. But we're going to wear a t-shirt. You don't need gloves, anything like that. Oh my gosh, it's so <laughs> cold out here. <laughs> Okay, so we do that. And I think that's how you shovel snow. Welcome to Keto on the Couch with Rachel and Joe from Omaha. I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are Two, two Crazy, crazy Ketos. If you're new to our channel, welcome. Yes, welcome to the more than 300 new subscribers since the last Keto on the Couch. Here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like product reviews, we do recipe videos, we talk about various keto topics. Every Thursday, we live stream at 9.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and then every Monday, we sit down on the couch for Keto on the Couch. We just kind of talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. You can find us in different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we have a website, which is twocrazyketos.com, and that's where you're going to find all of our different recipes. Now, we do upload at least five new videos every single week, so make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon, and that way, every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Yeah, I'm getting my drink. I was like, what's happening over there? <laughs> So welcome to Keto on the Couch. We are coming to you from Omaha, and this is really weird because we're filming this at 7.30 in the morning on a Sunday. I cannot get my bearings. It's so I'm supposed weird. to be at church. We're supposed to be in church for Rachel over a couple of hours right now. Yeah. But we've been in Omaha this week for... Um, Keto Summit Omaha. And it's been awesome. It's been awesome. I've got a little bit of young man going through puberty voice today. We've lost our voices a little bit. But it's just because we have been so excited. Yes. We've been getting to talk to lots of people. And, um, yeah, if I get a chance to talk to somebody, like, they're not getting away for at least 30 or 40 minutes. Yeah. I mean, I can tell you, I really, I really enjoyed when we went to KetoCon. We were talking about this last night with Chris and Miriam. And uh, Holly and Steve and I really enjoyed KetoCon, but there are so many people at KetoCon. It is oh. like the biggest keto convention, but be this one because it was regional, it was smaller. You really had the opportunity to talk to someone. I mean, we spent over an hour yesterday talking to a physician mm -hmm. who's not like a big physician in the keto community. She's just a doctor who's talking about keto to her patients. Yeah. And it was really awesome. We're going to talk about that in a little bit. We, You spent over an hour talking to the gentleman from the kombucha, that who's, who, that woman's husband. Hearing his passion for helping people restore their gut health and what that has meant, like how many different um, diseases and inflammations and troubles that, that people have been able to um, eliminate because they've gotten their gut health, you know, gut health fixed. It has been awesome. It was yeah. interesting to see how passionate he he is about this. Now he is a carnivore guy. Yeah. And takes, you know, these shots of like the kombucha and uses the the sauerkraut. It's like a medicine. Yeah, it's like a multivitamin. And that's the thing is he's like he's like he really believes in ancestral eating, so he's a carnivore guy. But eats sauerkraut and says, like, listen, the bottom line, that's what our ancestors did. They yeah. fermented food so they would have fermented foods during the winter and stuff. And then that would work on their gut health. And then they ate meat and then vegetables that they could grow during the summer and stuff. But that's what he believes in. He believes that you can be carnivore and still eat sauerkraut because you want all of those good, healthy gut biomes. But it's renewed my interest in doing fermented foods because we were yeah. doing fermented foods then we kind of stopped fermented foods and i'm back to like i want fermented foods because i love fermented foods and they are so good for you and then after talking to him i was like yeah we need to get back into eating some fermented foods you didn't tell him about the kombucha incident did you? i did not i i just didn't have the heart so if you didn't see it i'm gonna leave link for it right here over rachel's head 
from Friday into Saturday. They were the most awesome people. So awesome. They gave us a half a gallon of kombucha, which we didn't even ask for. They were like, here, we want to just give you some so kombucha. generous. And we were trying to figure out, like, how are we going to get, get this, that home? Like, that TSA agent is well, going to... The problem got solved because if you didn't see the video, go watch it. We left it in the car and it froze. But us cleaning it up was hysterical. Yeah. <laughs> so I felt like super bad. I was like, please don't tell him that we lost that kombucha. I'm still a little bit sweaty thinking about dropping off our rental car today. <laughs> I don't know how that's going to go down. But overall, I had such a good time. And that's what I was trying to say before that... Because this was regional, it was small, we got to talk to people, you got to talk to the speakers a lot more, they were open. I mean, I had a conversation with Danny Vega and Rob, Dr. Rob Silas in the hallway, like just there, and we were talking about flexing your muscles and Danny's talking about how you could build muscle with almost no weight just by thinking about like the muscle contracting as you're contracting it. And I said to him, like, Danny, only lives like three hours away from us. I'm like, you have got to somehow teach me how to do some of this stuff because like, I'm not a gym guy, but I'd like to learn how to do some of this stuff. And so he's like, they're having a camp there. He's like, we're doing two camps. And one was in March, excuse me. One is in March. And I was like, oh, that's going to be kind of difficult because of lacrosse season and stuff. But then he's doing another one in May. and But the one in May, and once I get more information, I'll like let you guys know. If you're in the Tampa kind of area, because the one in May is going to be a one day keto camp. Are that, you going to go to that? And so are you. Oh, man. Yeah, because Mata is going to be like helping. I know, but have you seen her? I know. It's awesome. She's amazing. M maybe we'll that look looks like, like. That looks like a lot of work. I was going to say work. maybe we'll look like them, but there's not a chance we're going to look there's like them. There's zero chance. <laughs> They look like they walked out of Sparta. But they're just awesome. So we were talking about that, and I was talking to Danny about carnivore. And then we were talking to Dr. Rub Silas about I'm still stuff. getting my bearings at the thought of working out Working that out hard. with them? It's only one day. I'm going to wear a lot of coats. <laughs> <laughs> so back to the... So we were talking to Dr. Rob Silas, who is also does... He does mostly carnivore. Okay. You know? But what he was talking about is... His big, he's a carboholic is what he says he is. He's like, I'm a carboholic and I like to, I eat my carbs at night, which is very much like me, which is why this piqued my interest. He's like, I eat my carbs from after dinner until I go to bed. That's kind of like which, you. Which is me. If I'm going to eat carbs, I'm good all day long. Now I'm not even, not even carbs, just snacking. It's not, it's not just carbs for it me. It could be keto snack. It could be a keto snack. It could be a piece of cheese. It could be. You know, a piece of pepperoni. It could be a nush cake. It could be anything. It could be, I'm not going to snack on carbs, but I will snack like almonds, macadamia nuts from dinner until bedtime. And I go to bed late. Mm -hmm. So his theory is, what do carnivore animals do after they eat? Like a lion? A lion or a bear or something they like sleep. that. They They go to sleep, right? So he's like, if your first instinct as a carnivore is to sleep, why not push your, if you're doing OMAD, uh -huh. why not push your eating window all the way till right before bedtime? Wow. Be so you eat and then, you, and go then to bed. you go to sleep. But that is so against, like talk about standard American diet and the way you think, right? Right. You never want to eat right before bed. Right. And what his, what he was saying to us was... If you put fuel in your car at night or in the morning, what's the difference? There's no difference. Your body is going to work on it no matter what. Huh. You're still going to have a 22, 23 hour fasting window one way or the other. And your body is most efficient at night while you're sleeping. It totally makes sense. But it's interesting like how many meat hooks the standard American diet had in you. Right. right, because and and us, not just you, but collectively, because yeah, that that goes with it. Like you're not allowed to eat right before bed. Right, and the, I'm I'm intrigued by this. So my plan is within the next month or two after we're done with our fast, I'm gonna try this for like twenty or thirty days. I want to do this. I want to see like how does this impact me? Because like if if my eating 
is if I'm snacking from say six six o'clock seven o'clock after my meal, all the way up until when I go to bed at midnight. What if I eat at eleven o'clock or even ten o'clock? Because as somebody who has a hard time going to sleep. And I do get tired after I have a carnivore meal. Yeah. Now, obviously, I won't be able to do this every single day because no. sometimes life gets in the way. But at, if I'm eating a carnivore meal, why not eat at like 10 o'clock, which would then make me sleepy. And then maybe I'm going to go to bed at a reasonable hour. Yeah. Like it would all tie in. Because, and help. Right. And then in addition to that, I talked to him about something else that I want to get is the the whole thing with Nurse Cindy, which that interview is going to be coming out in the next couple of days. Yes. Is I want to get a continuous glucose monitor. And the reason I want it is because I want to see what's going on. Because I had this conversation with Dr. Barry, and, and I know some of you guys have actually said you you concerned about the same thing where I said to Dr. Barry, like, why is my blood glucose so high in the morning? Mm-hmm. When I'm not eating carbs, I'm not eating sugar. I haven't had carbs and sugar in over in three years now. Why? Why is that? And he's like, because you're being really efficient. So I'd like to see like what is it that goes up and down. Like I was talking to Chris from Keto Chow, and he had the continuous glucose monitor, but I want to do it for like six months right. and see what makes my glucose up and down. And one of the reasons I want to do it is because every time you're stressed, your glucose goes up, whether even you're eating it or stress. not. Even good stress. So if I can watch like the glucose monitor real time without mm-hmm. pricking myself constantly and I can see what's causing it to go up, maybe I can use a CGM to help me to learn to control my stress. So what do I have to think about? What do I have to pray about to get it to go back down, which would then teach me to control my stress, which would then teach me to control my cortisol, which would then teach me to control my glucose, my, uh, my glucose uh, levels. You could, you could, what do you think about that? I, is this like amazing? These you, are the things that we learned this week. And it wasn't, I mean, the speakers were awesome. Yes. But we learned this because it was such a small little regional convention. You had the opportunity to talk to people. And they weren't talking to us because we're YouTubers. No. Anybody like was walking up to them talking about it. So these are the things that I'm planning on doing like with that CGM. Because like I was talking to Chris for Cheetah Chow, I started saying... And he was like, you want to see your glucose go sky high? Wear a CGM and teach a 15-year-old how to drive. He's like, my glucose was going to 120, 130. Wow. Just being in the car with a teenager driving. Because you're stressed out. Well, and Miriam who from Keto Chow, who also was wearing one, said that she thought it was interesting when she would be excited about something, anticipating like she was wearing it and about to get on to a live stream that we were having. And she said, I saw this spike and it was like... It went up when she was getting ready to watch us. When you're excited or happy about something. Because stress is stress. Right. Good stress, you stress, is still stress and does stuff to your body. Yeah. It's kind of interesting. So it was was a really fascinating conference. And I'm going to urge you, if there is a local, regional keto conference in your area... Go to it. And go to lowcarbevents.com. I'll leave a link down below... Chris, whenever he finds one, he puts it on there and find one of these conferences and get to it because number one, it's community. It is. And you see that in some of our different like vlogs throughout the three days. It's just community and it's awesome people and you get to learn things. Everybody's happy to see you. You get to try some local products. Like I loved that. It was awesome that we were here. We got to try... Um, the Omaha bakery, which yes. I mean, now she's starting to ship, but for the most part, you got to live in Omaha. There was an Omaha bison company. Oh my goodness. Yes. There was another jerky company. Well, yeah, there was another jerky company. They weren't jerky at all. They were delightful. <laughs> it was awesome to get for people to be able to get hooked up with these local keto companies that nobody knew about. Well, and you, yeah, cause sometimes you don't know what's going on. In your area. We right? got to try keto pizza, like real keto pizza. In the pizza box. In a pizza box. It was kind of hilarious because you see all these people wandering around with pizza boxes and I'm like, oh my goodness. Uh, yeah. Is somebody come in here and like infiltrated this conference and is trying to undermine people's dieting? You know, and it was like, no, this is, you can totally feel not, and normal. Right. You know, you can just feel normal because you're buying a pizza like... 
you would buy a pizza at a pizzeria. Yeah, I mean, it was a, it was a thick crust where you could pick it up. You, I, it was amazing. I'm holding around a piece of pizza, delicious, like a piece of pizza. They had uh, two different kinds. They had a meat lovers, which is the one that we got yesterday. Well, I just had to get it. Yeah. And then they had a buffalo chicken one, which I did not get. And the buffalo I chicken one was good. like a, a pizza. With buffalo chicken and hot sauce and everything on it. I almost got that one. But I'm like, I wanted to try traditional because we're not going to get this opportunity no. again. And it wasn't a lot super of good high in it. carbs, but I definitely overdid the keto carbs yesterday. Because like I was like, last chance. Pizza, desserts. Because tomorrow, <clears throat> excuse me, we're back to... Back at it. Back to Keto Chow and Keto Brex. She is in the process of taking that keto crust. Mm-hmm packaging it dry and is going to sell it on their website where all you got to do is add water and egg or whatever and you'll be able to make your own keto crust at home wow so you ready to go home i am excited to go home because i'm ready to get back at it yeah i'm also ready to go poop (laughs) okay i know potty talk it's two crazy ketos how could it not be potty talk or bra talk is anybody else like this that when you travel, your body's just like, I'm done till I get home? That's, yes. We have not talked about this, but like, yes, I am that person too. Right? N- not, Nothing. Not going to be, I'm, I'm pretty regular on keto. Nothing. Not I'm pretty regular on keto, a couple times a day usually. Nothing here. Nothing. And I'm ready to go poop. It gets scary after a while, right? Like, you're like, what does this mean? Does this mean like I, I'm I'm two more vacation days away from a hospital stay? Like it's scary. What is up with now? Here's the funny part: when we go to like Orlando or something like that for just an, like say two three days, or when we go someplace where we leave the hotel and go directly to the airport. Yeah. Usually that morning, my body's like, okay, vacation's on, over. Yeah, you're on the way home. You can go, and you start getting it. a little bit more regular on the morning of going home. I'm a little concerned. Because it's 8 o'clock right now. Our flight's not till 6 o'clock. We have to leave the house. We're going to church and then we're going to go out to lunch. Don't put anything else in there. When is my body going to be, it's it's okay now, vacation's over. I'm hoping it's not on the airplane. Yeah, that's super scary because I don't even want to like pee on the airplane. I know. Let alone be there for a minute. I, I am very concerned about that. So yeah, I am ready to get home Number one, I miss the kids. I yes. want to see the kids. And number two, yeah, I want to go number two. <laughs> well, you know, it just, and it's like there's another layer of pressure because if you're staying with people. Yeah. That you're like, well, I I really just don't want to go to the bathroom at all. I want everyone that I'm staying with to just believe that I don't go to the bathroom. I don't even have a butthole. Like, there, it doesn't even, it's not even a thing. I'm just like, I'm totally, I'm like, I'm a baby doll. Right? <laughs> yeah. So, but... Is anybody else like that? Like, yeah. why does our body decide, like, I'm shutting down when you're on vacation? It doesn't make the vacation more enjoyable. No, because then you're concentrating on it. And where is all of this food that I've been eating for the last four days going? We ate wings two days. When's the last time we ate wings two times in three days? I don't know. It's it's definitely a concern. We ate wings. We ate keto desserts. I mean, we we ate steak. Oh my gosh! Yeah, well, let's talk Good about steak. We went to hang out with Keto Savage's house that night, and that steak. There's a lot of beef in there. Keto Savage cooked that steak so perfectly. I ate an entire ribeye and a burger. Wow. And I had the liver and the heart and the kidney. It's like, all in there. The, that's all in there. It hasn't come out yet. I'm surprised we could zip our pants. Do <laughs> so you want to do some comments? Yes, please. Let's 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 get off get the potty off talk. of potty talk and talk about comments. Okay, so if you're new to our channel, every week on Keto on the Couch, we do two things. We go to our Facebook family group, which you are, if you are not a member of our Facebook family group, there is a link down in the description. Go sign up for it. Totally free. Totally free. There is over a thousand people in there who are there to inspire you, encourage you, to share recipes with you, tell you about deals, different things like that. The only thing we ask you to do is please keep it positive. We don't allow keto police in there. And we ask you to don't share like links from other companies and stuff without kind of running it past the moderator or something like that. Well, and what's kind of fun about it is you 
you know, you're part of the Facebook family group. And then, you know, depending on your region, if you go to these conferences, you run into each other. Yeah. So like, you know, Heather and, you know, Sarah and I mean, there's, there's people you, you meet them at these conferences. So it's like another reason to like get to go to a conference and, you know, get to see the people that you talk to every day. Yeah. It's just awesome. So just go in there and sign up. If you, if you don't have somebody to support you at home, that whole group will support you. Yeah. And then please leave your story. Because your story is going to impact somebody. It's going to inspire somebody. It's going to encourage somebody. Because there's somebody out there that's going to read that and be like, that's me. Yeah. And so they're going to be able to be like, well, they did it so I can do it. Or like, they also have the attitude of like, is anybody else going through this right now? Right. You know, so please share your story. And then what we like to do is pick some of these stories every week and share them as our subscriber of the week. So this week's subscriber of the week is Deborah. Hey, Deborah. And Deborah said, my story is not like, is not unlike many other stories. I did, however, have gastric bypass in June of 2005, 14 and a half years ago. My starting weight before gastric bypass was 278 pounds on a four foot nine frame. So you can only imagine. My lowest weight after surgery was 159 pounds and I settled at 167 for nine years. I never reached a non-obese weight, although my health was much improved and I was okay where I was, kind of. Then life happened. I got busy with my photography business. Ooh, photography business. We need to talk. We need to talk to you. Kids got married. We had a grandchild. And I guess my focus shifted to taking care of everybody but myself. Yes. Slowly old habits started creeping in, including diet soda. I started drinking with my meals, which is a no-no with uh, WLS. Uh, sugar somehow found its way into my life and little by little I could tolerate it more and more over a period of five years I gained 51 pounds and reached 218 pounds which is the photo that you see on the left which we're going to show right here more than the weight gain my type 2 diabetes has returned among so many other health issues my a1c was up to 6.7 and my doctor wanted to start me on metformin my fasting blood sugars were 147 to 160 Both of my parents were diabetic. My mom was insulin dependent and died at the young age of 52. Mm. My dad was type 2 from his early 30s and ended up being diagnosed with Alzheimer's at the age of 63. Wow. Sadly, I lost my dad to AD slowly for years before AD took him completely on uh, December 1st, 2017. I truly believe his diabetes was a contributing factor to the AD. At any rate, diabetes is a frightening disease and knowing I had it again was my aha, get your crap together moment. Yeah. On Mother's Day last year, at the gentle encouragement from my son, I stopped drinking Diet Coke. Four days later, I went all in to begin my ketogenic lifestyle. That first week, I was sure I was going to die. I had the worst headaches, and I thought there was no way I could do this. Week two, the headache went away, and surprisingly, so did my craving for my sweets. But even more miraculous was seeing my fasting blood sugars come down. By the sixth week, my fasting blood sugars were under 100 wow. and my A1C was 5.8. My doctor stopped talking about medications for diabetes. Yes. Here I am, January 7th, 2020, having lost exactly 40 pounds. I've celebrated my 60th birthday on October 1st, and I plan to continue my journey back to health with this lifestyle. If I can do this, I promise you, you can too. I shoot for just 1% better than last week. Ooh, that's good. God bless you, and thanks for letting me share my story. And awesome. here is her before and after picture. Oh my goodness, you look amazing. Wow, how incredible. That is so oh, awesome, Deborah. Deborah, congratulations. And thank you for sharing your story, because like I said, Beautiful. that story is going to impact somebody. I know it impacts me. I mean, it is going to impact somebody who is at that moment, they, that's still looking for that aha moment. Well, and I was thinking as she was talking about how going through like week one and week two and feeling like you're going to die. Yeah. Like it's the keto flu can be really just wreak havoc on, on certain people. And that's such a crucial time for you to get some support yes. around you. So maybe that's you. Maybe you are in week one or week two of the keto lifestyle and you're feeling really wonky. I just want to say it's not going to last forever. Just push through. Do not give up because there is 
feeling good on the other side of this. You just yeah. need to get through this period of time because your body is getting rid and detoxing all of the yucky stuff that we were addicted to. And I can tell you, when I was getting off of sugar, I felt like I must be like what a heroin addict feels like when they go through detoxing, sweating and throwing up and in the bathroom all the time. I mean, it was a really tough thing to go through. Um, but once you have that aha moment where you've really decided, I want to do something for myself, then you're ready. You're going to push through. And we are here and that whole keto family and our Facebook family group is there for you to cheer you on as you're going through that. If that's what you're going through right yeah. now. Now, if you are new and you're starting to go through that keto flu, a great way to help you get through that is with electrolytes. Yes. Make sure you're getting electrolytes. It is the best way to work on the keto flu. Getting your potassium up, getting your sodium up. If you're experiencing headaches, that is just a pure lack of sodium. You cannot overdo it on sodium on the keto diet. You right. are losing so much. Don't worry about overdoing it. And one of the things, you know, that little vial of Redmond Rail Salt, if you guys ever see that little tiny vial mm -hmm. that we have, the travel one, that's six grams. That's how much you need to be taking in minimum every single day. You need that much salt. That entire container. Yeah, and it's funny because when we went to Keto Savages for the um, the steak dinner, the amount of salt that we went through to just to season the steaks, this wasn't even in addition to after we were done, everybody putting more on. But this is a group of carno keto carnivores, right? Yeah. And just the amount we went through, it was funny. Now, Chris shot a great picture. I mean, look at that. It's amazing. Amazing. So, yeah, get your sodium in, get your potassium in. You can use the Keto Chow Electrolyte Drops, Redmond Real Salt. That's the one I recommend. I personally say don't even use pink Himalayan salt anymore. I mean, yes, you can get it, and some of them are good. Get the Redmond. You're going to get so many more minerals. It's locally sourced. You're supporting an American company. And it's not more money. No, and they're starting to be available. Everywhere. In grocery stores everywhere. So, you know, yeah. Just yeah. get that. It's good. And you'll thank us for it because it is sweet and delicious. Yeah. And get the salt rock if you're new to keto. Get those salt rocks. I'll put a link down below. That thing is awesome. It helps if you are somebody that is trying to stop doing this 50 times a day, like putting food in your mouth, like I have had a problem with. It has helped me not miss gum. And if you've been on our channel for any length of time, you know I'm also a gum aholic. But you have not chewed gum. I have not chewed since you got those sock rocks. One piece of gum since right. we've gotten those sock rocks. <laughs> sock rocks. <laughs> Salt rocks. And it's giving you your electrolytes, your minerals, and your sodium. And you're polishing a beautiful gemstone. Yeah. So you ready to do comments? Yes, please. Okay, so I had to start this off on a positive note. Okay. Melinda wrote... Hey, Melinda. I love grape zip fizz. My favorite is orange cream, though. You said a positive note. It is a positive note. Grape. 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 It was so funny. We were at the convention yesterday hanging out with Heather and Phil. And Phil, like, looks at Rachel and he goes... Do you have any zip fizz? And she's like, oh, yeah, yeah, I have some. He's like, not grape. No. I don't want grape. There is no grape in my bag. <laughs> so Jen wrote. Hey, Jen. Oh, Rach, I can eat that much cheese and more. Believe. I love that. She <laughs> called me Rach. My favorite uncle in the whole world used to call me Rach. Really? Hey, Rach, yeah. I love that. And I love cheese. And I love you. <laughs> So Tracy wrote, Hey Tracy. I love watching you too. I ordered the Redmond salt crystals. I love to get my electrolytes this way. Previously I would just pop a piece of coarse real salt and it really does curb cravings. It really does curb your cravings and you're going to find it really strange. I know I did, but um, if you're craving something sweet, try the salt. It eliminates the, the sweet cravings as well as what you'd think would be a, a salty craving. A lot of times when you're craving sugar you're actually craving salt so if you take salt it will actually help with that sugar craving it's the same thing when you are hungry t have a glass of water yeah because you may actually be thirsty yeah and comes not down hungry to so suzette wrote hey suzette been on keto since august while i haven't lost a lot of pounds i've lost inches i feel wonderful and i appreciate you both and the videos you do by the way i love my 2kk shaker oh my goodness well thank you for getting the shaker and yeah 
it is very normal for you to lose a bunch of sizes before you lose a bunch of pounds. It's very frustrating. I want to have gratification on that scale, the devil. We call the scale the devil because he is not going to tell you what kind of day you're going to have, right? Yeah. So don't listen to him. The scale is going to tell you that keto isn't working in the, the pace that you want it to work at, but check your pants. Your pants are telling you things are happening. And that's something that we were talking to people at the conference about this week, and both the speakers and people who were attending, that the scale doesn't always reflect what's going on in your body when it comes to keto. Right. And a lot of people are quitting because what's happening is, is they're losing inches, but they're yeah. not seeing the scale go down. And so they're like, well, this doesn't really work. And I know it's a mental thing because I'm somebody who was 285 pounds. Mm -hmm. I've gotten down to 183. Now, right back, I got, right now I got back up to like 190. I don't know where I'm at after going home. And I want to start working on building muscle. Yes. But building muscle means putting pounds on. Yeah. And Even that's though a scary it doesn't thing. mean putting size on, like in my waist, I'm going to put pounds on. And I mentally don't know if I can handle being 195 pounds, being 200 pounds. Even if that meant I was going to look like Danny Vega. Right. I don't know if I could mentally handle that number. Yeah. Even if it meant I looked and felt more fit. So I I get it. But what would you rather be? Would you rather be a woman in a size 8 and weigh 190 pounds? Right. Or would you rather be a woman in a size 20? Mm-hmm. And weigh 160 pounds. Right. It's very, it's, you've got to shift your mind. Right. And I really recommend getting a Taylor's tape measure. Mm -hmm. We even have one available on our website, but you can get them anywhere. Yeah. And do measurements. And don't expect that the fat is going to come off in the locations you want it to in the order that you want it to. Are we going to boob talk now? No, we're not going to boob talk because, well, I lost back fat way before I saw any movement in my legs. I wanted my thighs to go first, but I also needed the back fat to go. So just because it didn't go in the order that I wanted it to come off, you know, it still came off. And the same thing, I lost a lot of weight in my neck. I, was, I had a very fat neck. And of course, I wanted to come off of my booty first. It didn't, it came off of my neck. So at least it came off. Yeah. So Rebecca wrote, Hey Rebecca. I'm a new subscriber. I'm so glad I found you. I've been doing keto since the day after Labor Day 2019, and I'm down 40 pounds. Wow. I fell off the wagon during the holidays, but I'm back at it. I still have a lot to learn. I'm going through and watching your videos. Such inspiration. Thank you so much, and have fun in Omaha. Oh, my goodness. Well, thank you so much for your well wishes. And, yeah, this is a new year. Don't worry about the view from being off the wagon, yeah. right? Just you, you're back on and this is going to be an incredible year, but 40 pounds already. Yeah. That's and awesome. Welcome to the family, by the way. Yeah. Stephanie wrote, Hey Stephanie. OMG. So funny to hear you say that losing baby weight, my one and only baby just turned 17. And I've said that numerous times this year is going to be the year I lose my baby weight. Well, I'm really going to this year. I've lost 50 pounds of it in 2019, so 46 more pounds to go in 2020. Wow, that is incredible. Yeah, we talked about how, you know, when people would say, you're going to lose some weight. I'm like, yeah, I need to lose the baby weight because the baby's 12. The, yeah. baby's, the baby's a teenager now. Well, the baby's 19 now. The baby's 19. So Delissa wrote, Hey, Delissa. I don't tell people I'm eating keto now. Not even my family I believe in. I can show you better than I can tell you. Now that people are noticing my body change, my response is, thanks for noticing my weight loss. It's been difficult watching what I eat, but the health benefits are paying off. I think it is great to not even say the word keto because it can be like seen as a fad diet. People can immediately put up a wall about it and then start ribbing you. And if you are just onboarding to this, we don't want you to have any like negativity needlessly coming in your direction. There's other ways to phrase it. Yeah. And that's something we were talking to a lot of people about this weekend. When you're talking to your doctor, when you're talking to your friends, when you're talking to family who aren't doing keto, who are maybe have that like negative thought about keto, like, oh, that's just like bacon and fat and like it's really unhealthy, saturated fat, your cholesterol is going to go up. Instead of saying, hey, I'm doing keto, you can say things like, hey, I'm shopping the outer aisle in the grocery store. 
hey, I'm not eating gluten. I'm not eating processed foods. I've, re I've eliminated sugar out of my diet. Nobody is going to complain about any of that stuff. And no doctor is going to say, no, I would like you to increase your sugar intake, right? Yeah. And you may not want to be the smart aleck like me. You know, sometimes I go into the grocery store and somebody will make a comment about what's in my cart. And I'll say, well, I, I lose weight like this. And they're like, well, how do you lose so much weight? And I'm like, yeah, I eat two sticks of butter a day. Yeah. You don't probably have don't to, want to say that. You don't have to be a meanie. <laughs> don't have to defend yourself. Your genes say it all as they're shrinking. Pat wrote. Hey, Pat. Hey, bra talk is important to some of us. I would love to know what Rachel's favorite styles are. I like anything at Victoria's Secrets because they just push me up and the bigger the better. If there was something there that said, hey, we'll add 14 cup sizes, <laughs> I would be Dolly Parton right now. Donna wrote. Hey, Donna. Yes, Keto Lifestyle is a lot of reading labels, but also take a look at the serving size. Thank you, Joe and Rachel, for all you do on your videos. What was that cereal? Three eighths of a cup. I know. And it's just a ridiculous. And like we said, we've talked about, I would love to see some kind of law come into play where every company had to put the same exact serving size. It would make it so much easier. So much easier. But yes, please, 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 please look at labels. And that's one of the biggest issues we even had with that. Remember that Flex Pro Meals is like, there's nothing on your ingredient label. We had the problem with that at a couple of people who had products at the convention this week where yeah. they didn't have the ingredients and weren't willing to tell you what's in it. I'm not trying it. You're not willing to tell me what's in it. I'm not going to try it. And we are not negative Nellies. No. You know, I don't need to say, you know, this is the company that's terrible here at the convention. I'm just not going to frequent it and I'm not going to spotlight it. Yeah. As a matter of fact, I was talking to somebody this weekend there is, I'm not going to name the company, there is a very large company in the keto space, not just in the keto space, but in nutrition itself. The owner is very involved in the keto space, mm -hmm. has a phenomenal product. It's like an MCT oil product. I know it's good ingredients because I know who the person is, very big person. Mm -hmm. And they sent it to us and said, would you guys do a review on it? Would you guys start using it? And I'm like, it's a great product. I have a problem. You're not putting on your label what the MCT oil is bound to. Right. And I said, well, it's bound to acacia gum. Awesome. Put it on the label. Yeah. And they're like, well, and I'm like, it was an oversight, but I will not buy that product for myself, even though I know, because I know who it is and I you're telling me and everything, but I would like, I want to see it on the label because I tell you guys to look at the labels. Well, I look at the labels. And if you're not going to tell me what it's bound to, how do I know? It could be bound to maltodextrin. And this may be something that I would use every day. Yeah. I don't want to have a little bit of something I don't want every day. Yeah. So it's really important. It's like peanut butter. Look at It should have peanuts, peanuts. And maybe salt. And that's it. But they don't need to add oil. They certainly don't need to add sugar. None of that stuff. So if, you're, if you see a product and it says I, it has peanut butter in there, Look for the product that says peanut butter. And then in parentheses, it says, you know, peanut butter is made with peanut, salt, sugar, whatever. And if you see the sugar, then you're like, that's not a peanut butter I want to eat. I don't need it. Yeah. Yvette wrote. Hey, Yvette. I agree. Let everyone do keto the way they want. Yes. Oh my goodness. Have grace for other people. And also grace for ourselves. Yes. Sometimes I am the worst keto police officer for myself. I was thinking while I was talking to the gentleman that um, makes the sauerkraut and the kombucha that while I want to do a little bit more carnivore eating in my life, is there any way that I could work in this sauerkraut that I also want to eat? Because isn't carnivore supposed to be like, I don't get any vegetables at all. And I'm starting to kind of like get nervous as I'm talking to him. Like, am I going to get in trouble with myself if I want to eat carnivore and then also include fermented vegetables? Are you serious? Why am I stressing myself out right now? Right. Like I do not need to keto police myself. Let's use some different things tweak our keto diet, we will find a combination that is right for ourselves. But like, don't freak out. If it doesn't work, we'll we'll change it. Right. We'll move on. We'll tweak it. And I was even talking to like Dr. Barry and a couple of other people about that. You know, I was talking to Danny Vega about carnivore. Mm -hmm. And you know, everybody, there's like these levels of carnivore. And you go online and you see, some people say carnivore, you can't add salt. Okay. Some people say carnivore, you can't have vegetables. 
I was in a group and somebody put up a comment about they just received their peak yogurt. They'd ordered in August. It finally came because peak went through, through some issues while they were moving their warehouse and the packing plant and stuff. And they're like, now I can't eat it because I'm carnivore. I was like, <sighs> it's 100% carnivore. It's, a, it's only cream. There's no other ingredients added to peak yogurt. What's not carnivore? And then people started being like, that's not carnivore. It's from an animal. You can do this the way you want. Don't beat yourself up and don't beat other people up. You know what is the ugliest dresses in any store I've ever seen? The ones that say one size fits all. Yeah. They don't. That There is no such thing. You know what you get when you get a one size fits all? A moo moo. That's awesome. Did you just a think moo-moo. of this? A moo-moo. Yes, because I'm thinking to myself, I have been in stores where the entire store is a one size fits all store. Hideous. <laughs> Terrible. Nobody looks good in this, right? Picture Homer Simpson in that episode where he wants to wear the moo-moo. I, I'm just loving that because, yeah, keto, carnivore, it's not one size fits all. And the reason it's not one size fits all is because nobody's got the same body. No. Everybody's body reacts differently. Your body reacts differently to stevia than my body yes. does. So if your body reacts differently, why would the same exact diet react differently? And if you don't have the same exact diet as somebody that maybe you admire or a YouTuber that you enjoy, you can enjoy the, their content and maybe not do things exactly the way they do it. Yeah. Kavita wrote. Hey, Kavita. I've never been a big cat person, but your kitty is the sweetest little cat I've ever seen. She just wants to be loved. She wants to be loved 24-7. I'm also interested in getting back to the animals. Yes. So Crafty Lady wrote. Hey, Crafty Lady. So nice to see you on the couch again. Congratulations to Noelle and Beth on winning the Immersion Blender and the Keto Chow. Congratulations to 2KK on 7,000 subscribers. Yay. She said, Rachel, what an adorable robot costume for the children at church. You always have terrific ideas. It is weird not dressing weird today. I mean, it I guess really I have is. a I have a slightly weird sweater on today, but yeah, it's it's I, I'm dressing like a normal adult woman today. In search of 76 wrote. Hey 76. I just love you both. The honesty is great. We just got to Florida for the next couple months. This is our second winter in our motorhome in Florida, but our first one following a ketogenic lifestyle. Love how easy it is to stay honest in a small space. Keep up the great work. I love that. And I wonder if there's a barbecue grill. If you're in Florida, maybe we could come over for some barbecue. <laughs> September wrote. Hey, September. Been doing carnivore with sugar-free sweetened coffee and not one adult drink since the first. Honestly, I wasn't sure I'd be able to do it, but it's been easier than expected. You are awesome. Great job. Oh my gosh, I love that. So last one. Steph wrote, Hey Steph. I know about those haters. The other day I got told by two people that it looked like I have cancer because I've lost so much weight. The day before that, I had another two people tell me I need to slow down my weight loss. Well, those four people are getting the hand because I feel so much better and my health is so much better. I'm not changing for anyone. Oh my goodness. I'm so happy to hear. I, I wanted to get my purse and get in the car, <laughs> like hearing this. Man, that makes me so mad, but I'm glad that you're not letting them detour you. Yeah. Oh my gracious. Well, that is <laughs> this week's Keto on the Couch. You're leaving me steamed here, man. I'm leaving you steamed. I'm going to go mom on them. That's this week's Keto on the Couch. We are going to get everything packed up. Yeah. We're going to go to church. We're going to kind of hang out with Chris and Miriam. I hope I don't leave something behind. You know, you always have that like feeling I'm leaving something. Yeah. Like underwear or something important. <laughs> My pants. I've got a bunch of stuff from that Omaha baking company in the freezer I need to go put in my bag. protect that. <laughs> Don't leave that. Please do us a favor and make sure you join the Facebook family group and leave your you know questions, your comments, yeah. your stories in the Facebook family group, as well as down below in the comments section for this uh, Keto on the Couch so that we can read them next week. Um, so please do us a favor and hit that like button down below. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the little bell icon. And that way, every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Until next week. Bye. bye.